Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Diane Gage, a marketing manager here at ATCC. Thank you for joining us for the latest installment in the ATCC Excellence in Research webinar series. Today's webinar is entitled Advanced Models of Parkinson's Disease, presented by Dr. Brian Shapiro. Dr. Shapiro is a technical writer at ATCC Cell Systems. He will provide an overview of neuronal differentiation. He will then explore how ATCC NPCs can be differentiated into these lineages and used in toxicology studies, focusing on the performance of the Parkinson's disease derived NPCs. If you have any questions for Dr. Shapiro, please use the chat function available through the webinar program. Questions will be answered at the end of the presentation. Any remaining questions, as well as the recorded webinar presentation, will be archived on the ATCC website, www.atcc.org. With that, I would like to welcome Dr. Shapiro. Thank you, Diane. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this webinar. The last time I presented, I revealed that ATCC was taking on new efforts to validate its neural progenitor cells as essential tools for toxicological screening. Today, I will present ATCC's Parkinson's disease-derived neural progenitor cells. Like our other neural progenitor cells, these can be differentiated into multiple neural lineages or used in their undifferentiated state to investigate the pathogenesis of Parkinson's or used for neurotoxicity studies. But before I talk about these innovative neuroscience tools, let me provide a brief background about our company. Founded in 1925, ATCC is a private, independent, nonprofit organization that serves and supports the scientific community with industry standard products and innovative solutions. At ATCC, the core mission is to advance and apply scientific knowledge. This is done through a multifaceted approach that includes the acquisition of materials, which are either deposited or identified as a unique means of supporting scientific needs, the authentication of materials through a polyphasic approach that employs genotypic, phenotypic, and functional analyses, the preservation of materials as low passage stocks, and the development of both acquired materials and novel scientific tools that have been generated at ATCC. The products at ATCC are also standardized so that we can provide resources for generating reproducible research data. Additionally, these materials are stably distributed to both domestic and international scientific establishments. Through these efforts, ATCC has been a resource for the standard use of materials in in vitro biological research for over 90 years, adding further credibility to scientific discoveries. Now today's presentation is broken up into four parts. I'll be giving some background information about the current status of neurobiology to start and what is needed for neurological models. I'll then give an overview of ATCC neural progenitor cells, including quality control data, biological markers, and how we monitor the differentiation of these cells. I'll then show you how the cells can be used in toxicological studies, either in their undifferentiated state or after their differentiation in ATCC dopaminergic neuron medium. In the current state of in vitro neurobiology research, models come from either primary cells from animals, such as mice or rats, continuous cell lines that are usually isolated from tumors, and induced pluripotent stem cells, or iPSCs, which are either commercially acquired or made in your laboratory. The problems with building your models of neurobiology from these sources are that the primary animal neurons, for example, are not predictive and have a wide donor variation. In addition, 
No whole animal model completely recapitulates the clinical symptoms and pathology of Parkinson's disease that's seen in humans, which suggests that the cells derived from these animals would also not fully represent the human disease state in vitro. Continuous cells are not isolated from normal cells and thus may not be predictive of the in vivo situation. Uh, and creating iPSCs and then neurons from iPSCs is very time and labor intensive. It can take from eight to 10 weeks to create the neural progenitor cells and then additional time to differentiate them. There's also the problem of securing iPSCs from Parkinson's disease patient tissue. So what is needed for in vitro neurological studies is biologically relevant models of normal and disease tissue which have been validated for neural functioning and are predictive for screening applications in drug development, normal physiology research, and importantly, toxicological studies. Neural progenitor cells answer all these needs, as I'll show you in the following slides. Now, I've shown this slide in previous webinars, but to help us understand how neural progenitor cells, or NPCs, can be uh, the ideal model for neurotoxicology and other studies, I'd like to run you through it again. In vivo neural stem cells undergo asymmetric cell division cycles which give rise to either more neural stem cells or to neural progenitor cells. The neural progenitor cells may then differentiate down different lineages that have specialized morphologies and functions and develop the marker expression of those neural lineages. Neuronal differentiation from iPSCs is also characterized by these changes. At ATCC, we've established a process that can generate an unlimited supply of NPCs from normal and disease iPSC lines via the formation of embryoid bodies. iPSCs express TRA160, which we use as a marker of their pluripotent state. Over the course of four to eight weeks, when cultured in our proprietary NPC expansion medium, the iPSCs form three-dimensional aggregates called embryoid bodies. The embryoid bodies are broken up and the cells are replated in the neural progenitor cell expansion medium. Subsequently, the replated cells differentiate into NPCs. Now, during this differentiation process, TRA160 expression is lost and is replaced by Nestin and PAC6 which are widely regarded as markers of neural progenitor cells. Expression changes again when neural progenitor cells differentiate further into their lineages, which is achieved by culturing the cells in lineage-specific medium formulations. Neural progenitor cells that differentiate into astrocytes lose expression of nested in PAX6 and instead produce glial fibrillary acidic protein, also known as GFAP. NPCs that differentiate down the neuronal cell fate express microtubule-associated protein, or MAP2, double cortin, or DCX, and neuron-specific class 3 beta tubulin, also known as 2J1. Neuronal cells can further differentiate into dopaminergic neurons and are identifiable by expression of tyrosine hydroxylase, or TH, which is an enzyme involved in dopamine formation. Finally, neural progenitor cells that differentiate into oligodendrocytes express the marker O4. So implementing neural progenitor cells in your experiments saves one to two months worth of work and gets you running your experiments on differentiated neurological cells sooner. Furthermore, these neural cells will faithfully recapitulate the in vitro situation. So what are the advantages of using neural progenitor cells? First of all, since they're derived from 
human iPSCs, no progenitor cells, are human models and exhibit no donor variation. Also, since many of our neural progenitor cell offerings contain reporter constructs, live imaging is possible. Neural progenitor cells are flexible in that they exhibit full differentiation spectrum. In other words, they can differentiate into neurons, glial cells, or oligodendrocytes. In addition, to simplify things for the culturist, ATCC has a complete system of cells and media available for expansion and differentiation. ATCC also provides protocols to help you with your expansion and differentiation processes. So some of the key benefits of including PCs in your research are they give more biologically relevant results and provide a more predictive system because they are derived from the same parental cell. Parkinson's disease neuroprogenitor cells provide a model that could better replicate the disease state, but in vitro. Neuroprogenitor cells express lineage markers for easy endpoint readouts. In addition, using our reporter labeled cell lines ensures the lineage identity. And as mentioned above, they can differentiate down neuronal and glial pathways. Our neural progenitor cells are easy to use because we provide a complete system of expansion and differentiation media, as well as validated protocols. And finally, and possibly most importantly, Utilizing neural progenitor cells uh, saves time in that you save about eight weeks of embryoid body formation. You can work with your differentiating or terminally differentiated neural progenitor cells sooner and your experiments will yield results faster. Now ATCC has several neural progenitor cell offerings, including neural progenitor cells derived from normal bone marrow CD34 positive iPSCs. Uh, these include ACS5003, which is one of the subjects of our study today. I'll also be focusing on ACS5001, which are neural progenitor cells that were derived from iPSCs created from a patient with Parkinson's disease. We have, neuro, we have reporter cell lines, which can be used to monitor late neuron differentiation, astrocyte differentiation, and early neuron differentiation. One of these has a GFP marker linked to double court expression. Another has a nanoluck halo tag reporting GFAP expression. And ACS5007 has a MAP2 nanoluck halo tag reporter, which informs early neuron differentiation. So as I mentioned before, I'm going to be focusing on ACS5001 and um, ACS5003 in the neurological study. Um, but we're also going to be looking at ACS5007. Uh, in addition to that, we also carry growth and expansion kit and a dopaminergic neuron differentiation kit, which you simply add to DMEM F12 to make your complete medium. I'd also like to point out that we perform full characterization of ATCC neural progenitor cells, such as post-thaw cell count, cell longevity, neural progenitor cell marker expression, and neuronal differentiation potential. We also perform standard cell biology QC testing, such as STR profiling, sterility, mycoplasma, and viral panel. So I've given you some background information about iPSC-derived neural progenitor cells. I'd like now to guide you through the differentiation of these cells. So first we took a look at the expression of the positive markers of neural progenitor cells, Nestin and PAC6, and the negative marker TRA160. Um, 
These neuroprogenitor cells were incubated in ATCC expansion medium, as mentioned earlier. As you can see, the ATCC neuroprogenitor cells express Nestin and PAC6 and lacked expression of TRA160. So according to our phenotypic criteria, we have good neuroprogenitor cells. Next, we'll look at the expression of those markers in the Parkinson's neuroprogenitor cells. These cells were incubated in ATCC expansion medium, as in the cells in the previous slide. As you can see, uh, the cells express Nestin in green and PAC6 in red, and lacked expression in TRA160. So the Parkinson's neuroprogenitor cells also fulfilled our criteria. We then wanted to confirm that our dopaminergic neuron media could induce differentiation in neuroprogenitor cells. Normal human NPCs here, ACS5003, the non-reporter line, were seated on cell matrix basement membrane gel coated 12 well plates at a seating density of about 10,000 cells per centimeter squared and cultured in neural progenitor cell expansion medium, ACS 3003 uh, overnight. We then incubated the neural progenitor cells with dopaminergic differentiation media for up to three weeks. This, by the way, is the treatment parameters for the other dopaminergic differentiation studies that I'll show you for this particular cell line today. Immunostaining of tyrosine hydroxylase and 2J1 indicate that the ATCC neuroprogenitor cells had a potential to be differentiated into 2J1 positive early neurons on the left-hand panel, and on the right, tyrosine hydroxylase positive dopaminergic neurons. We then wanted to confirm that our dopaminergic neuron media could induce differentiation of neuroprogenitor cells. Parkinson's disease neuroprogenitor cells here, ACS5001, were seeded on cell matrix basement membrane as before. We incubated the neuroprogenitor cells with dopaminergic neuron media again for up to three weeks. By the way, um, one slight difference from the normal neuroprogenitor cell differentiation protocol. Uh, we found for optimal differentiation of these cells, uh, we needed to um, add five micromolar CHIR99021, or CHIR, which is a potent GSK3B inhibitor. Uh, it's known to strongly activate Wnt signaling. And, and basically, we needed to add this to get um, full dopaminergic neuron differentiation. And we show that here. Immunostaining of tyrosine hydroxylase and 2J1 indicate that the Parkinson's NPCs had potential to be differentiated um, into 2J1 early neurons on the left and uh, in the middle, right, uh, tyrosine hydroxylase dopaminergic neurons. Since neural progenitor cells can reportedly differentiate into glial and oligodendrocyte cells, we looked at the expression of markers of those sulfates. In this study, we compared normal iPSC-derived and Parkinson's disease iPSC-derived neural progenitor cells. We incubated groups of each of these cells with in-house oligodendrocyte media for about eight weeks and other groups of neuroprogenitor cells with commercially available astrocyte differentiation media for about five weeks. If we look at the upper panels, what we see is similar staining in morphology for the astrocytes for both cell types. If we take a look at the lower panels, though, while the staining was similar for the oligodendrocyte lineage differentiation, the morphology of the Parkinson's disease-derived cells was a bit different. They didn't get that sort of star-shaped, stretchy morphology that the uh, normal uh, neural progenitor cells were showing. As an aside, 
I'll show you the complete range of what we have for neural progenitor cells. Here we looked at the dopaminergic neuron differentiation of neural progenitor cell reporter lines. So uh, immunostaining of tyrosine hydroxylase and 2J1 here indicate all three NPC reporter lines had the potential to be differentiated into early neurons and um, dopaminergic neurons after a three-week incubation with the dopaminergic neuron differentiation media. Now, as shown in the top panel here, nanoluciferase secretion in dopaminergic culture media of MAP2 nanoluc halotag reporter neuroprogenitor cells significantly increased in a time-dependent manner. Treating the MAP2 nanoluc halotag reporter NPCs with the dopaminergic differentiation media resulted in a marked increase in luciferase secretion that was absorbed at four days and sustained up to 18 days. Likewise, we can see nanoluc or nanoluciferase secretion in GFAP nanoluc halotag reporter NPCs in a time-dependent manner after treating the cells with astrocyte differentiation media. We saw a significant increase in luciferase at day 16. Therefore, these neuroprogenitor cell reporter lines can be used to assess the, progress, the progression of neuroprogenitor cell neural differentiation. In addition to monitoring um, GFAP or MAP2 expression by measuring luciferase activities, we can qualitatively track GFAP or MAP2 expression using immunocytochemistry with halotag antibodies or by live imaging with fluorescence labeled halotags. In addition, as you can see here, halotag expression was co-localized well with GFAP or MAP2. The top panel shows the time-dependent expression of GFP in double court and PGFP reporter line incubated with the um, dopaminergic neuron differentiation media. Therefore, we can monitor the progress of mature neuron differentiation by GFP imaging. So these neuroprogenitor reporter lines provide a powerful tool for studying lineage-specific differentiation and for drug screening. As I showed you before, we developed a dopaminergic neuron differentiation media. So both neuroprogenitor cell growth and dopaminergic neuron differentiation media have been validated in all of our NPC lines. For example, our normal NPCs cultured in either an alternative supplier's media or our own growth media for three passages exhibited a similar efficiency of dopaminergic differentiation after treatment for three weeks. So ATCC can provide a complete culture solution for the growth, expansion, and dopaminergic differentiation of neural progenitor cells. So we looked at the differentiation potential of ATCC neural progenitor cells via immunocytochemistry and reporter expression. We wanted to confirm those data by looking at the gene expression of neural progenitor cells after differentiation using our dopaminergic neuron media. In addition, in the natural in vivo environment, many different types of neurons can be formed from the same growth factors that are in our dopaminergic media. Therefore, we couldn't ignore the idea that other mature neural types could be found among our differentiated dopaminergic neurons. Aside from dopaminergic neurons, we tested for the expression of markers of glutamatergic, GABAergic, motor, and cholinergic neurons. So to do this, we chose uh, the Parkinson's disease neuroprogenitor cell line ACS5001, the normal neural progenitor cell, ACS5003, and the reporter cell line ACS5007, which has a MAP2 nanoluc halotag reporter to look at the gene expression of these various markers in neural progenitor cells after treatment with the media. 
to do this, RNA was extracted from these cell lines um, after they were treated with the dopaminergic media for zero, one, two, or three weeks. The cDNA was synthesized for a QRT-PCR analysis um, of neuronal gene expression using TACMAN probes shown here. First, we confirmed upregulation of early, early and dopaminergic neuron genes. Here we see that the functional neuronal marker MAP2 messenger RNA increased significantly during three weeks of neuronal differentiation of the ACS 5003 and 5007 MPC lines. We also saw this in the ACS 5001 Parkinson's disease neuroprogenitor cells. This confirmed our immunocytochemistry and reporter activity evidence that I showed you previously. Similarly, 2J1, or here TUP3 messenger RNA, increased significantly during three weeks of neuronal differentiation in all three cell lines. In addition, from two to three weeks, there was a significant increase in tyrosine hydroxylase, which is the enzyme that converts L-tyrosine to L-DOPA. We also see increases in NUR1, a developmental transcription factor mRNA expression. Because there was little increase in the expression of these genes in week one and week two, this shows that the neuroprogenitor cells must differentiate for at least three weeks before we see mature midbrain dopaminergic neurons. The expression seems to be lower in Parkinson's disease cells, but it is still significant. Related genes like VMAT and DAT with opposite functions also increased significantly. Uh, for example, here in the left panel, VMAT2 or vesicular monoamine transporter 2, that's the membrane protein that pumps dopamine and other transmitters from cytosol to synaptic vesicles, uh, increased over the course of three weeks. DAT which has the opposing function um, of pumping dopamine out of the synapse back into the cytosol, um, showed a significant increase followed by uh, decreases after the first week. Finally, we looked at expression of ADAC, or aromic L-amino acid decarboxylase, which is an enzyme that converts L-DOPA into dopamine. We saw that this enzyme also significantly increased in a time-dependent manner in normal and Parkinson's disease MPCs during neuronal differentiation. So what I've just showed you um, is the expression of three neuron cell fate genes and four dopaminergic neuron genes increases in neural progenitor cells after three-week incubation time in our dopaminergic differentiation media. This and the immunocytochemical data, as well as reporter expression data, indicate we can reliably get dopaminergic neurons from this media. We now want to test what other types of neurons this media could stimulate the neural progenitor cells to differentiate into. So first we looked at um, whether or not our cells could differentiate into glutamatergic and GABAergic neurons. So the next three slides will focus on glutamatergic gene expression. Glutaminase 2, or GLS2, catalyzes the formation of glutamate from glutamine. It and the vesicular glutamate transporters VGLUT1 and VGLUT2 are markers of glutamatergic neurons. So first of all, we saw that the mRNA of GLS2 was increased in all three cell types. VGLUT1 also increased in all three cell types, although its expression dropped in week three in the Parkinson's disease neuroprogenitor cells.
we saw similar expression patterns of VGLUT2 in all three cell lines. So we saw that the mRNAs of all three genes increase significantly in a time-dependent manner during neuronal differentiation in normal and Parkinson's NPCs, indicating that there was a presence of glutamatergic neurons after three weeks of culture in our media. Here we looked at the expression of a receptor of gamma aminobutyric acid, aka GABA. We saw that mRNA increased significantly in the normal and Parkinson's NPCs in a time-dependent manner during neuronal differentiation, indicating that we had GABAergic neurons in our cultures as well. So then we decided to look for the major neuron types such as motor neurons and cholinergic neurons. We looked for upregulation of motor neuron genes such as LIM3, HB9, and N1. We also looked at the cholinergic neuron gene CHAT1, CHAT, sorry, during dopaminergic neuron differentiation. So first we see a significant increase in LIM3 in the normal cells on the left and in the Parkinson's disease cells on the right, with the exception of the ACS um, 5007, didn't seem to uh, differentiate into the cell type. Uh, same thing with the HB9. So ACS 5003, was increased but unchanged in the reporter labeled ACS 5007. On the right, uh, we saw it elevated in the Parkinson's disease neurons, but this expression dropped after the initial spike at one week, although it was still significant after three weeks. In N1, the expression rose after two weeks in the reporter labeled line, and three weeks in the normal line. In the dopaminergic line, expression rose after one week and gradually dropped off. For chat, the expression of the reporter line rose after two weeks. In the normal line, the expression never seemed to get off the ground. In the dopaminergic line, expression rose after one week and rapidly dropped off. So generally speaking, the neural progenitor cells showed an increase in the messenger RNA of a range of specific neuron markers after incubation with the dopaminergic differentiation media. We saw the most consistent increase in dopaminergic neural markers, signifying the presence of those neurons. We also saw differing levels of other neuronal markers, which suggested a heterogeneous population of neurons within the uh, cultures. In the next slide, I'll show some data that confirms the gene expression data with immunohistochemistry analysis of um, the ACS 5007 neural progenitor cells. So we did immunocytochemistry using antibodies against tyrosine hydroxylase, NER1, GLS2, VGLUT2, CHAT, and 2J1 in uh, ACS 5007 neural progenitor cells differentiated um, using the dopaminergic uh, media for three weeks. And in this slide here, I show consistent with the QRT-PCR media, we saw staining uh, for all of these neuronal markers. So now that I've showed you the differentiation potential for these cells via qPCR and immunocytochemistry, I'll move on to showing how neural progenitor cells can be used in toxicological studies. For the neurotoxicity studies, we looked at two assays. Oh, sorry, we looked at just one assay, actually. Rizazurin viability, which is a colorimetric assay um, similar to the Formazen-based assays. ATCC has recently released a highly sensitive and easy-to-use Rizazurin re reagent called Reliablu. So the studies that I'm going to show you were performed using that reagent. And these were done um, in undifferentiated neural progenitor cells. 
The cells were treated with compounds two days after plating in ATCC neural progenitor cell expansion media. This experiment was done with passage six neural progenitor cells. They were treated with the drug for two days and incubated with the Almar blue dye uh, for six hours, the um, Rely blue dye. This figure shows the effect of several neurotoxins on ACS 5003 neuroprogenitor cells. Amiodaron, which has been associated with peripheral neuropathies, chlorhexidine, an agent recently identified to be neurotoxic to neurons, uh, SHSY5Y cells and Schwann cells, and the acute and chronic toxicant digoxin. Paclitaxel, a microtubule stabilizer known to cause neuropathies in patients, uh, cisplatin, a platinum-based apoptotic agent known to have neuropathic effects, effects but reputed not to be um, neurotoxic were used as well. And then uh, piperine, which is a noise susceptive agent. In this experiment, each of the compounds except for piperine displayed toxic effects on the neural progenitor cells. Paclitaxel and vincristine had the most profound effects, which were also observed at the lowest concentration of one micromolar. We saw fairly similar trends in the undifferentiated Parkinson's disease neural progenitor cells. These cells were resistant to cisplatin, piperine, and to all concentrations of hydroxyurea. They were sensitive at all concentrations to paclitaxel and vincristine. They also displayed sensitivity to amiodarone and chlorhexidine. So this table summarizes our toxicology study. On the first column of the table, we show a list of the toxins that we tested. In ACS 5003 neural progenitor cells, um, they were sensitive to most of the compounds that were, they were treated with, with the exception of piperine, which was expected. Cisplatin and hydroxyurea cause only mild toxic effects, and that only at the highest concentrations. Similarly, Amiodarone, chlorhexidine, vincristine, and paclitaxel exerted toxic effects on the Parkinson's disease neuroprogenitor cells. They were resistant to piperine as well as the compounds that the normal um, neuroprogenitor cells were only mildly sensitive to. So I presented our toxicological data. Now I'll summarize the talk. ATCC has created neural progenitor cells, both normal non-reporter and lineage reporter lines, as well as a new Parkinson's disease IPSC-derived line. We've also made media supplements for expanding your neural progenitor cells and differentiating them into dopaminergic neurons. Our neural progenitor cells are a human model of the nervous system, and because they're derived from IPSCs, there's no donor variation. As I mentioned, you can expand and bank these cells. The cells can differentiate across a wide spectrum of neural and glial lineages. We have dependently differentiated our neuroprogenitor cells into neurons, astrocytes, and oligodendrocytes. Live imaging of differentiation is possible with our GFP expressing reporter line that signals endpoint neural differentiation. The studies I showed you today demonstrated that after treatment with our dopaminergic differentiation media, normal and Parkinson's disease ATCC neuroprogenitor cells have the potential to be differentiated into dopaminergic neurons, GABAergic neurons, glutamatergic neurons, motor neurons, and cholinergic neurons. 
And then finally, I showed you that ATCC neuroprogenitor cells are suitable for drug toxicology screening applications using a panel of seven drugs with varying levels of neurotoxicity. And one final word, if you're at Society of Toxicology and Tox Expo this year, come on by and visit our booth, number 1422. We also have an exhibitor-hosted session featuring our advanced renal models, as well as two scientific poster presentations featuring some of uh, the ATCC's new toxicological tools. So thank you for your attention, and with that, I will pass the microphone back to Diane. Thank you, Dr. Shapiro. In just a few moments, we will begin our Q&A session. Please use the chat function available through the web program, webinar program to submit questions. This session will be documented as a web page and, ar and archived, along with the recorded webinar presentation on the ATCC website at www.atcc.org. Great, so we have a few questions already coming in. Let's see, the first one is, often neuronal cultures require the use of plates coated with a substrate, such as poly-D ornithine or poly-L lysine. Does NPC cultures require a gel coating or substrate? So, great question, Diane. Um, they do, actually. Uh, our neuroprogenitor cell protocols require that the culture dishes be coated with cell matrix basement membrane gel, which uh, you can get at ATCC. It's uh, part number ACS 3035. Wonderful. Here's another one. Um, does ATCC carry disease NPC, NPC lines? Oh, yeah. So, so we have the Parkinson's disease cell line. Uh, as I showed you before. Wonderful. Um, how many passages can these cells undergo? So the neuroprogenitor cells can be proliferated uh, to 15 population doubling levels and passage over 20 times. Some of the results that I showed today were using cells from passage 10, actually. Great. Well, this is a good one. Um, can you explain why you are getting different neuronal populations when you claim your media is a dopaminergic differentiation media? That is actually a good question. Um, so the majority of growth factors in our differentiation media are common to generate all neuronal cell types. The big difference really is just the concentration that's needed to make uh, a majority of a specific neuron type in the culture. So by tweaking the concentration of growth factors, we're able to increase the number, number of dopaminergic neurons relative to other neuron types. Gotcha. Let's see. Um, what dissociation reagent is recommended for the passaging of NPCs? Uh, okay. Um, so actually, the um, ACS 5001 neural progenitor cells require undiluted acutase for passaging, and um, that's different from the protocol for neuro normal neural progenitor cells, which use acutase diluted one to one with uh, PBS. Okay. So you mentioned the addition of CHIR 99021 to the media for differentiating the Parkinson's disease NPCs into dopaminergic neurons. Where did you get the compound from and what concentration is it used? Okay, so um, for differentiating the um, Parkinson's disease neuroprogenitor cells into dopaminergic neurons, we have to add CAR 99021. Um, and the final concentration is five micromolar. Uh, we Acquired this from Stemgent. Its uh, cat number is 04 0004 10. Um, and that's just added to our dopaminergic differentiation media. Uh, this component can be added in an aliquot to the media and then stored at 4 degrees C for one week. Great. 
Great. And what's the optimal cell confluence when passaging NPCs? So, unlike normal primary cells, passaging normal progenitor cells near 100% conf confluence doesn't affect their performance. In fact, we actually highly recommend you to passage the neural progenitor cells when they reach 95% confluence. Do not split them before 85% confluence. That will um, totally inhibit cell proliferation. Wonderful. It's a good tip. Um, I think we have uh, time for one more. Um, are there passaging recommendations for NPCs during trilineage differentiation? So that's kind of a good question. Um, it is okay to split cells during astrocyte and oligodendrocyte differentiation when the neural progenitor cells become confluent. Um, passage NPCs do not survive well during dopaminergic neuron differentiation, however. Overconfluence of neural progenitor cells doesn't seem to affect the outcome of, neuro, of dopaminergic neuron differentiation. So you don't have to worry about that. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. Um, so at this time, we'll conclude our Q&A session. I would like to thank Dr. Shapiro for the excellent presentation and thank everyone for attending this webinar. Any, question, any questions that were not answered this afternoon will be answered and posted with the video at www.atcc.org. Thank you again, and everyone have a great day.